Okay, today we're going to talk about the moment of force. So you can think of moments as a tendency of a body to rotate. Forces applied to the body induce or cause these moments. And to prevent the body from rotating, a counter to the rotation must be provided. So here you are holding this bar straight out from you. And at the far end of the bar is a weight. So this weight is pulling down on this bar. And if we ignore the weight of the actual bar itself for a second, you should recognize that you have to, with your hands, both push up on the bar to keep it from falling down, and also twist on the bar in this kind of counterclockwise direction. That twist is the moment that you are applying to the bar to counteract the moment that the force is creating on the bar. If we have some force here, and you have to withstand it, or hold the bar stable, or in what we would call equilibrium, you're going to have to push up with the same force. You're also going to have to apply some twist. That prevents the bar from rotating. You should recognize that as the weight changes, so as F gets larger and larger and larger, this force also gets larger. Also, the twist you have to imply gets larger and larger. On the other hand, if all we do is move the location of the force, so we move this force in this direction, the force that you have to apply remains the same. You still have to hold up the same amount of weight. But the twist you have to apply gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the location that this weight is applied to the bar moves from the end towards where you're holding it. We can calculate the magnitude of this twist by multiplying the magnitude of the force times the distance. So if we take if we take our distance x and multiply it by f, we're going to have the magnitude of this twist, or what we'll call moment, is equal to x times f. So again, the moment gets smaller as the force gets smaller and as x gets smaller. What happens, however, if we're not applying the force in this straight up and down direction? What if, in fact, we have this situation? The force is angled relative to the direction of the bar, not at 90 degrees. Well, we can actually say that this force is acting on what we call a line of action of force. So that's basically a line that points in the same direction that the force points, and it extends to infinity in both directions. If we wanted to calculate the moment that that force created at this point, we would simply draw a line from this point to that line of action such that we make a right angle with the line of action. This would now be our point x, and we could still calculate the moment as m is x times f, that distance times the magnitude of our force. So in general, the scalar formulation for calculating the magnitude of a moment that a force creates is to take the magnitude of the force and multiply it by the magnitude of a position vector that points from the, air, the point that we wish to take the moment around to the line of action of the force and that makes a right angle with that line of action of the force. So you should recognize that x is nothing more than the magnitude of a position vector. So, so far we've talked about the magnitude. What about the direction? So you should recognize that if we pull down on the bar, this force creates a moment that creates twist this way, that you have to counteract by twisting in the other direction. On the other way, other hand, if somebody's standing here pushing up on the bar, it's creating a twist or moment in this rotational direction, which you have to counteract by twisting in obviously the opposite direction. We consider this to be positive moment. 
So a moment that's counterclockwise about the axis we consider positive. Which axis are we discussing here? Well, if we use our normal right-handed coordinate system, where this is x and this is y, the z direction actually points out of the screen at u. So this rotation, this counterclockwise rotation that we consider positive is rotation around the positive z axis. And in fact, you can imagine a moment as nothing more than instead of these curvy arrows as a vector. And the vector points in the z direction and has a magnitude that defines how much twist or how much mo force, excuse me, how much twist we're inducing. This follows the right hand rule. So if you take your hand and hold it and point your thumb in any direction that defines the direction of the moment, and then take your fingers and curl them, your fingers curl in the same direction uh, that the twist is induced. So if you take your thumb and point it out of the board, your right hand thumb pointed out of this screen, and then try and twist your fingers, they will naturally twist in this direction, counterclockwise. The fact that we're now talking about directions and how these directions can be defined as vectors in space suggests that there may be another way to calculate moments, and indeed there is. If we use the cross product, the cross product being defined um, in this fashion, the vector c, which is equivalent to the cross product of the vector a onto the vector b is equivalent to the magnitudes of the two vectors multiplied together times the sine of the angle between the two vectors and this is actually a vector result. It points in the direction that c points. So theta c points normal normal to the plane defined by a and b. So if we let r be a position vector that points from point of interest to line of action of the force and f we write as a force vector so this is the force then the moment in vector formulation is r cross f. So if you don't know how to f perform this math, this r cross f mathematics that goes into the cross product, or actually is the cross product, please read your book and if you still have trouble come see me. What this formulation suggests is that if I have a force and I take its line of action and I want to calculate the f magnitude of the moment that that, f excuse me, want to calculate the moment that that force creates around some arbitrary point that I can take any vector r, position vector r, that points from that point to the line of action. So I could take that vector, I could take that vector. And if I take r1 cross f, it's equal to r2 cross f. Because no matter how we calculate the moment, we should get the same result. And indeed this is true. And this is called the law of transmissibility. So I'd like to work an example. So give me a second and let me set up the example. All right, so let me describe the example really quick. First we have a bar that's sticking out from a wall at an angle of 30 degrees uh, from the horizontal. The bar is five feet long and has a distance or a height, we'll call it, of 0 0.5 feet. At the far end of the bar, at the opposite corner from D where we're trying to determine the moment, we have a force applied and that force points in this direction at an angle of 20 degrees from the horizontal. The scalar formulation says that what we need is D times F and that will result 
provide us the moment. So f is pretty straightforward here. We have 600, so f equals 600 pounds, no problem. To find d, we actually need something that's at a right angle. So let's kind of sketch that in. So here's this. That's at a right angle. So we know that this is 20. We know that this is 30. That tells us that this angle is also 30. If we draw a line from here to here, we can call this angle alpha. So if we label this distance d, that we're looking for, and this distance from corner to corner as d prime, we should be able to see that d is d prime times the sine of 30 plus 20 plus alpha, which we'll call 50 plus alpha. So we need to determine what uh, alpha is and what d prime is. Alpha is the inverse tangent of 0 0.5 over 5, which is equivalent to 5.711 degrees. All right, so here's this distance, here's this distance of 5, this distance of 0 0.5. Delta, or excuse me, d prime is equal to 5 over the cosine of alpha, right? So this is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent leg of 5. That equals 5.02 feet. That means that D is now 5.02 feet times the sine of 55.711. D is 4 point one five one six feet and if you do the multiplication here you'll get that M is equivalent to two thousand four hundred and ninety feet pounds which we would write as two point four nine kip or thousand pound feet I'd like to also work this problem using the cross product formulation. So give me a second and let me set that up. Alright, so now we're going to do the cross product formulation. So to do that, we recognize that that formulation states that M is R cross F, where both R and F are written in Cartesian notation. So let's start with F. First thing we have to recognize is that we have to define a coordinate system. Define a coordinate system. So I'm going to define this as x and this is y. F is then minus 600 times the cosine of 20 i plus 600 sine of 20 j. R is some vector that points from position D to anywhere on the line of action of this force. I'm going to choose this point right here. So my R points in this direction. You should recognize that the magnitude of R is nothing more than the magnitude D prime that we calculated earlier. Okay? And that this angle is, again, nothing more than the angle we calculated earlier, which is alpha. So we can write R as D prime times the cosine of 30 plus alpha. I plus D prime times the sine of 30 plus alpha J. If I take the values that I had before and substitute them in here, what I'll get is 4.076i plus 2.93j plus obviously 0k. That's R. F 
substituting the numbers is minus 563.81i plus 205.21j plus 0k. So now we have everything we need to do that cross product formulation. I'm going to do it over here. M. To do the cross product, we take the determinant of this matrix, I, J, K, uh, 4.076, 2.930, minus 563.8, 205.210. And the way I do this is I just continue that over here, right? 4.076, 2.93. Minus 56.7.8, 205.21. All right. Now, you can take the determinant however you wish, as long as you do it correctly. I take I times this times this, subtract from it I times this times this. In both cases, I have a zero that goes away, right? J times this times this, minus j times this times this. So you see I'm creating a crosshatch pattern as I go. Again, in this case, both times I have a zero in the multiplication. k is this times this times this. That's 4076 times 205.21 times k minus this times this times this. That's 2.93. Whoops, 9.3 times minus 567.8 K. And so what do I wind up with? 2.49. Why is that? R, magnitude of R is measured in feet. F, the magnitudes of F are measured in pounds. So I would get 2,490 pound feet here, which I'm going to write as 249 kip feet but in the k direction. So you see that the direction of the vector m comes out of the cross product automatically. When we did the scalar formulation, oops, which I erased, sorry. When you did the scalar formulation, you would actually have to take your right hand, point your fingers in the r direction, and then curve them back around towards the force vector, and your thumb would point out of the screen, also in the k direction. So both methods will give you the moment. Both methods are correct. There's actually one other method that in this particular case is a little bit easier, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Thank you.